Today we're going to set up our first tunnel and our newly built Bondix server. So let's get to it. So we're going to set up our first tunnel on our Bondix server that we've just built in order to connect our first router. So let's head on over to the server now and log in. And once we're logged in, we should be presented with the following screen. So you can see here it says the server is without an operating is operating without a license. So if you click on the uh, the button to take me there. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need to put in um, a license key. This will be provided to you via email once you've purchased it. So you need to put your license key in. Uh, we'll do that now. Uh, you need to put an email address in. Now, all the license keys that go onto this server will be using this email address. So all notifications about um, licenses expiring uh, or any notifications from us about your licenses expiring will go to this email address. So you need to make sure that this is a valid email address. And then we need to name our instance as well. So the instance is, is just the name of this particular server. We're calling this our test server because this is what we're doing our demo on. So we're just gonna call this the Bondix test as for our instance name. You might want to call it something like Bondix server one or um, if you've got specific licenses, so you could call it IoT server or you could call it standard server or you could call it enterprise server to match the type of licenses that you put on there. We're gonna name this one uh, Bondix test. Once we've submitted that, you will see that it's now licensed with the 200 megabit license. So this is an enterprise license. At this point, we now need to go and create our tunnel. So if we head over to the tunnel environments tab on the left hand side, and we want to add our first tunnel. So in this particular case, we, you can name your tunnel anything you want to. We're just going to call it RUTX 14 hyphen test. Okay, so then we create our tunnel. Once you've created your tunnel, you need to give your tunnel a password. Now we recommend this should be a complex password, uh, something that uh, is unlikely to get broken into just, you know, just as from a security standpoint, you want it to be as secure as possible. So let's do that now. You can toggle the visibility of the, uh, the password and that will show you what the password you've typed just so you can make sure that you've typed it correctly. Once you've done that, we wanna hit save. The Bondic server is now licensed. We've created our first tunnel. What we'll do now is we'll jump over to the X14 and then we'll set the Bondix client up to connect into uh, the new tunnel that you've just created and we'll show you how they talk to each other. So let's take a look at the Bondix client on the router. So we've logged in and we've gone to network and Bondix and then settings. And as you can see here, we've got nothing in here at the moment. We need to enable the, the connection uh, config mode should be manual. Uh, the tunnel should be the tunnel name that we set earlier on. So if we jump back onto the Bondix server, we can see that it's our RUTX 14 hyphen test. So that needs to jump on, to go into there. So RUTX 14 hyphen test. So this is now going to be the password that we set on the tunnel earlier on. Now the server, the server needs to be either the IP address of the server or the fully qualified domain name for the server. If you scroll down, uh, you'll see the connections by default that are added. So the one connection and the two mobile connections that are on this router will be added automatically. In another video, we'll cover adding additional WAN connections or Wi-Fi connections as WAN uh, and making sure that Bondix can use those. In this particular one, we just want the standard setup that's here. Uh, we won't worry about presets and priorities at this point. Again, that'll be something that'll be covered in another video. So we need to save and apply the settings, and then what we need to do is restart the service. So just bear in mind, once you've restarted the service, um, you might lose connectivity to uh, the admin area, especially if you're connected via uh, Teltonica's RMS. Um, because it was connecting through uh, originally by the normal connection, once you apply the bonded connection to it, it changes the way that that works. And then what you need to do is just basically close down the session that you have and then restart um, and open a new session through within Teltonica's RMS. If you're connected locally, you'll be fine. It sometimes also takes, we've seen up to sort of like three to four minutes before Teltonica recognizes that there's a connection again, even though it shows the router as being online. So once you've connected back in again, um, or if you're still connected, you wanna head over to network, Bondix, and then status. What status will show you is that you're connected to your 
um, server currently. So you can see here the status is connected, that we're bonding. We currently have one of four channels connected, so you can connect up to four channels into um, a Bondic server on a single license. Um, channels are individual connections. So if we had both the mobile connections and the wired WAN connection connected, that will be three of the four channels, and it will bond all of those. You can see what the remote tunnel IP address is. Uh, you can see the IP address of the server that we're currently connected to, and it's SSL encrypted. Uh, and you can see that we've been up for uh, 2.7 minutes, uh, the amount of data that's gone backwards and forwards, and also the version of the server that we're connected to. Uh, further down here, we can see that uh, the wired WAN connection ETH1 is connected. We've got a seven millisecond latency, and you can see the data going backwards and forwards, and if there was any errors uh, that were there recently. If we jump back over to the server, you can see here that on our tunnel, um, we've got 180 megabit, up and down, uh, the current data going to and from the server, the QoS preset, which is currently controlled by the client, not by the server. If it was controlled by the server, in brackets, you would have the word server here. That way you know that the uh, the quality of service that's being added is, is controlled at the server end. Whatever changes are made on the client would have no effect. Uh, we go into quality of service quite in depth in uh, one of our other videos. You can see here that WAN1, uh, ETH1 is connected. We can see the remote IP address that it's connected through. We can also see the latency, and we can also see what connection it's on, which is UDP, which is the default. Um, so we licensed the server. We created our first tunnel. We connected our tunnel on our router uh, through to our server, and we can see that it's connected on both ends. That's it, you've configured it, you've licensed it, and you've now got a bonding server running. We'll see you in the next one.